attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mike Toscano. I'm the Vice President of Sales for Converge Technology Group. Uh, <clears throat> on our call this morning, we have Heather Knotstein, who's going to present uh, Beam and their backup and replication solutions. And we also have George Mazitris, who's going to walk through a reference architecture. George is a, a senior architect with Converge Technology Group. Um, <clears throat> one quick uh, housekeeping item. Um, anybody who wants to ask any questions, please use the uh, chat window. Uh, on the right, and we'll address them if we can uh, along the way uh, in the presentation or at the very end. What I'm quickly going to do is just talk a little bit about Converge Technology, Technology Group. I'll uh, give a brief overview. So Converge Technology Group is a leading provider of co-managed advanced technology solutions. Um, Converge uh, CGG, as it's also known, is firmly rooted in the New York metro area. And while we primarily serve uh, the Northeast, we do have our fair share of deployments across contiguous U.S. and international locations as well. Um, as you can see, we, we specialize in three areas, uh, network infrastructure, unified communications, and virtualized data center solutions, which really addresses what we're speaking to today. Uh, and I'm going to briefly step through some of these as, as we move along. <clears throat> So some of the solutions that uh, CTG provides. Um, we're certainly an expert in uh, LAN switching and WAN routing. We do everything on the wireless uh, wireless LAN side, providing internal guest and voice over the wireless LAN as well. On the security side, we provide uh, IDS, IPS, uh, VPNs, um, uh, anti-X, and uh, unified threat managing, management, and some of the services that we provide. We do all types of assessments across the LAN, and the WAN and, and wireless as well. We provide design services which include uh, high-level RF design, prediction, wireless site surveys, um, and we do implementation, obviously, uh, for project management, uh, which includes project management and uh, implementation services. And on the back end, we have um, what we call SIS360, which is second-day support. On the UC side, we are primarily a Cisco shop, providing uh, voice communications um, with Cisco's uh, IPT and uh, uh, unified communications platform. Uh, we do mess messaging, uh, which is inclusive of, of uh, Microsoft and some of their product suites. Uh, we do video, legacy Chamberg, and obviously legacy Cisco. And we provide all the collaboration uh, technologies that support uh, unified communications. <clears throat> and on the bottom, as you can see, we provide some additional services. Uh, telecom expense uh, audits, uh, voice readiness assessments. We'll do financial modeling to make sure that the recommendations that we provide uh, fit your financial and technological budgets. Uh, we do high-level designs, and we offer project services, which include uh, the implementation service itself, as well as uh, project management. And again, we provide what we call the SIS360, which is the ongoing second-day support around that. And certainly last but not least, um, we are a large virtualized data center solution partner here in, in the New York metro area, uh, providing uh, components like UCS systems, Cisco's uh, UCS platforms, which include both their, uh, uh, their C and B series, uh, unified storage, uh, we provide data center networking, which is a back-end networking component that support these data center uh, infrastructures. Uh, we provide server virtualization around products like uh, VMware, and we also do desktop virtualization uh, with products around VMware and Citrix and backup and recovery, um, obviously, with, um, with, uh, with Veeam. Um, in addition to that, we do provide certain services, virtualized assessments, uh, storage assessments, um, high-level design services. And we, what we're seeing a lot of is implementation services, implementation services which require physical to virtual server migrations, desktop migrations, and just providing high, avail high availability uh, data center implementations as well. And again, what we call Assist360, we provide a second-day support on the back end. Now, I just wanted to take you through a little bit about what Assist360 provides. So it's both preactive uh, pre um, proactive and reactive uh, support for uh, 
or any, any devices that really have an IP address. Um, it's mostly around Cisco's, uh, Cisco's uh, product sets, but also around uh, some of the other manufacturers that we support, which is uh, uh, any server, any server manufacturer, which, which could be HP, uh, could be Cisco uh, on the SAN side, it could be NetApp, it could be, uh, it could be EMC. So we provide proactive and reactive support around that, making sure that system uh, uptime is, is uh, kept at a high. Uh, we provide real-time alerts, and we'll set up uh, distribution uh, policies in place to make sure that we provide the right notification levels to both our internal staff as well as the customer, um, which obviously gives you enhanced network uh, visibility. Um, it's all SLA, SLA um, uh, services. Uh, we provide unlimited help desk support, and we provide vendor management um, to all the manufacturers as well as uh, any of the providers uh, that you work with. Um, and we also do uh, service delivery management and provide uh, re real-time up updates uh, to your systems as well. So just a quick snapshot of who some of the partners are that we work with. Obviously Beam, um, who we're working with here today. But uh, some of the other partners that we work with around BDI is Citrix and, and, um, and VMware. Uh, we're a big Microsoft partner on, on many of their suites of products. Uh, on the storage and SAN side, we do we work with uh, EMC and NetApp. Uh, we work with APC uh, on the UPS side, and 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 uh, again, this is just a small snapshot, a partial list of some of the part partners that uh, CTG works with. So, why Converge Technology Group? So, on the Cisco side, it's pretty easy to speak to. Uh, we are uh, we have won their Satisfaction Excellence Partner of the Year um, for consecutive years. Uh, we maintain a gold star rating with uh, with Cisco, meaning that we keep a, a rating of a customer SAT rating of 4.9 or better out of five or better with uh, with our customers. Uh, we are an advanced UC partner. We're an advanced data center partner with Cisco, and we are ISC certified. Um, one thing we like to talk about on our experience um, side is that we. Uh, we provide, and and this is, and this really speaks to the type of solutions that we pro provide. Is we're advanced technology uh, centric. Um, our attach rate is is extremely high, meaning that we don't just provide routers and switches, but we provide all the advanced technologies and the complex solutions which make up the ecosystem um, for our partners and our customers. Uh, we have over 20 years of networking experience around UC, as well as uh, some of the data center platforms that have uh, recently been. Uh, release. Uh, we provide complete lifecycle services, which include design, implementation, um, operational support, and optimization services, which have been encompassed as part of our um, Assist 360 platform. You know, one thing, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with this, is, is our people. One thing that I speak highly of is, is the level of certifications that we provide. Now, one of the things that I did here was I just listed our Cisco certifications probably because they're the most transparent in the industry, they're, they're the most recognizable, but we certainly have the same depth and level of technology um, support and certification across all the manufacturers that we provide. We continually um, strive for improvement. We have what are called PDPs, which means that we monitor our employees' uh, development. We provide development tracks uh, for employees so they have something to look forward to and they have something to improve upon. Why this is, is important because it, it maintains, again, not only the internal customer uh, support that we have within our organization, but something that I think translates into uh, customer satisfaction excellence, which uh, we see and hear from our customers on a daily basis. So I'm going to leave you with that. Um, at this point in time, I'm going to turn it over to Heather, and she's going to present on Beam. Much. I'll get my screen shared here in just one minute, everybody. All right, so I got my screen shared now. So once again, my name's Heather Notes. I'm a systems engineer here at Veeam. What I'm going to be doing is going over the sneak peek, the version 7. So I'm actually going to be talking about the feature functionality, what the product's going to be able to do, and enable you to do in your business. 
Now, we have announced multiple features at this point. So what we haven't announced is a lot of the under the hood stuff as well. So there's a lot of engine basic processing, how we do what we do, that we've enhanced to make backups even faster. First thing I want to talk about though is vCloud Director. Now we already support vCloud Director. Now everybody knows that already, so we can back up and restore VMs that are already in VCD. The main difference between what we can do today and what we're going to be able to do is where we can restore them to and what we can back up and restore. So currently, what you're able to do is back everything up and restore it to your vCenter, your traditional VI that you work in. And then you have to re-import it back into vCloud. Well, not with version 7. We not only can back up that VM, but also the vApp metadata and the attributes and restore them directly into your vCloud director. Now, we're also going to have management suite availability when we're talking vCloud director, so you can monitor and report on your vCD environment, not just back it up and restore it. Now, we are going to be supporting vCD 5.1 and above. Now, this is a very powerful tool compared to what we have today. What we have today is good, but this is great because this gives us really deep integration into the API protocol for vCloud Director. And that's why we're able to restore right back in the VCD. And this is going to give us support for those fast provisioned VMs, which we didn't really have before because we're being able to put it back in, so no more importing. So you're going to be able to restore that entire VM your guest files, your VM files, even exchange items that are in your vCloud director. So once again, it's very powerful to actually get in there and get using. And it's really easy to use because as you see here, all you're going to do is go to your vApp, right click on it, and you're going to get all the great recovery options that you currently have. So you can restore that whole vApp or if you go to the VM inside of it, you can do anything that you need to. One of the nice features as well is you can choose to put it back into your VI if you need to. So it's right out of the box, it's going to start working for you, which saves you even more money because you're not going to have any development that you need to put into it to integrate Veeam into VCD. So you can also, if you're an existing Veeam customer, leverage your existing backup infrastructure that you have in place. So once again, saving you money because you don't have to deploy anything else out there to start working in this realm. It's just going to start working. And it's integrated directly into our console. So if we come in here, we can now see under your managed servers, your typical vCenter, Hyper-V, you also have your VMware vCloud. So now I can start seeing what I have inside of there. And as you see, you start drilling into the environment. Now I can see everything that's in there. So it gives a single pane of glass kind of approach in here. And it's also very affordable when you're talking about backup and recovery for VCD. The reason I say that is just like with our traditional backup and replication product, there are no agents. So we work with the hypervisor's innate ability and how they want to be worked with. So with VMware, we are VMware certified ready because of the way that we work with our hypervisor. So no agents, making it really easy to license it because you're not going to have to pay for them. You don't have to deploy them, monitor them, and update them when they come out with updates to keep everything working properly. So it brings the cost down there as well. And our licensing is all inclusive. So that means you get compression and deduplication. You get exchange e-discovery and item recovery. You get your scalable backup architecture. You get all the great features that make Veeam Veeam with one price. So there's no nickeling and diming you. We try not to do the whole a la carte routine. So we don't charge you for each individual piece. Second thing that I want to talk about is probably one of the more requested features that I've heard. The vSphere Web Client plugin. That ability to bring your backup view into vSphere. Well, We've listened to our customers once again, and we've brought this feature forward. So now we have a client plugin for our backup and replication product. So you have a little bit of one today, so you can view the status of your VM's most re recent backup jobs. Well, that was good to start with, but that's not what everybody really needs. So in version 7, you're going to get that at-a-glance view of all your backup job statuses, not just a one-off kind of moment. 
You're also going to be able to monitor with our management suite options. You can monitor what's going on with your whole VI, with your backups, unprotected, protected VMs. You can even start doing some capacity planning right inside of this client plugin. So we're giving that great flexibility in here for that. Now, traditionally, like I was saying, you've got your VMware environment. So you get your vCenter server, all your hosts, your VMs, and your web client. And that's where you manage most things. Well, what V7 is going to do is now tie together all your backup infrastructure, backup enterprise manager, your Veeam server, how everything's running that architecture, and bring it into that web client. And here's an example of that. So you're actually going to get a summary of all your backup jobs, what's going on, an overview of your infrastructure, so you can actually see what's out there, your backup servers, your proxies, repositories. You can even see repository status, so what's going on with it as well as the daily activity. So this gives you the really nice at a glance but still in-depth view of what's happening in your backup environment right from this client. Now, I mentioned earlier about capacity planning and protected unprotected VM reports. Now, this integration view comes when you have the management suite, which is not just our backup and replication product with all the great recovery options, but also where we can do the monitoring and reporting of the entire VI as well as your backup environment. So now I can start doing capacity planning for my repository. So how long until I'm out of space for my backups? How many VMs in my environment are unprotected? Maybe a VM got added to the environment, somebody forgot to put in a job, and it's really hard to find that information. Now, that management suite, that's what I was just talking about, and that's where you get monitor, reporter, and business view. So it's all three of these components are all in that same download. You get some web interfaces with it. You get customizable dashboards that you can send the boss so they don't have to be in there bothering you for real-time statistics. They click on their dashboard, log in, and get to see what they need to see. Each of the alarms that we have in Monitor, there's over 200 that are built with VMware, Microsoft, and Veeam's best practices. But we all know best practices are not best for every environment. So that's where all the customizable options come in. So I can actually fully customize these alarms. I've got a built-in knowledge base giving me possible causes, resolution, even the direct KB article link. Now I don't have to trust that Google has actually found me the right fix for my environment. And then one of my favorite things that they've brought in, and it's in our current version too, is capacity planning, but it's going to be expanded in version 7. You can now do capacity planning, host failure modeling, uh, how many VMs can you provision into your environment. So you get that flexibility to get in there and start digging in and really right size your environment. Plus you get under an oversized VM reporting, which is always really cool to look at. So I was talking about protected, unprotected VMs. This is where you can get into that. And this is an example of what that kind of report looks like. So you're going to get your high level. But then you're going to easily be able to see what's protected in your environment, when the last backup job was run, and the name of the job that it's in. And then I get my unprotected list. So now I can actually find those VMs, where they're located, how old they are, and the size of them. So this gives me that information to get in there, find these VMs, and make sure my entire VI is being protected. And you can schedule these reports to run as well, by the way. So capacity planning for your repositories lets you see, based off the trending of your own data, how many days you have left until you're out of storage space for those repositories. It's going to give you everything that you need from how many you have to the number of jobs and VMs stored in each. Veeam Explorer for SharePoint. So those of you that are already familiar with our Explorer for Exchange, it's the exact same thing except for SharePoint. Now we are going to be able to work with SharePoint 2010 for this, only at this point, um, but it's the exact same. Now if you're not familiar with us already on Explorer for Exchange, let's take a look at that real quick. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to your backups. In this example, I'm going to Exchange. We're going to go to that VM, right click on it, and go to Restore Microsoft Exchange Items. Choose my Restore Point and allow it to mount up this Explorer. 
Now, like I said, it's going to be the exact same when we're talking about SharePoint. Now, Exchange is going to be able to support 2010 and 2013. Both of these options are available for both VMware and Hyper-V, since we support both hypervisors. Now, what we're doing here is we're cracking open our backup file and in Exchange, allowing us to reach into the EDB without having to rehydrate this entire database. And like I said, it's going to work the exact same when we're talking SharePoint. You have your advanced search feature functionality. You can get all the way into an individual mailbox and restore it. But you can get to an individual email as well. So it gives you that granularity. It's like brick level recovery with an image-based backup. Virtual Labs is coming to Hyper-V. This is huge news in the Hyper-V realm because this opens up a lot of new possibilities. vPower. We first introduced vPower into VMware a version or so ago. This allows us to do an instant VM recovery, so be able to turn a VM on from a backup file without extracting anything first. So that's already there. That was the groundwork for what we do here. The second part of vPower is our virtual labs. This gives you a fenced-off environment, so you can test updates, upgrades, patches, you can play around. You get a whole lot of really cool stuff. Also, the UAIR feature functionality everybody's been craving for in Hyper-V is now here. So, as we talked about, instant VM recovery is vPower. That's just normal. When you're talking about a virtual lab plus that vPower, that's where you're getting into sure backup, where you can verify your backups are 100% recoverable or your UAIR, being able to restore individual application items back into key applications, even giving you that on-demand sandbox to play around in. So let's talk about Sure Backup in a little bit more detail. So the reason that this is created, this is a patented technology with Veeam. This ensures that your backups are fully recoverable. We're not just checking that the blocks aren't corrupted. We're actually standing these VMs up in an isolated environment and running tests against them to make sure the backups are recoverable. So let's talk about how this works a little bit. So you've got your production environment and your backup storage, and that's where all your backups are living, obviously. What's going to happen through vPower is we're going to create that isolated environment. We're going to use a little Linux appliance with a masqueraded IP in front of it, and that's what causes that isolation for you. So production can't see it, and it can't see production. Once the Sure Backup job runs, it's going to verify that the VM can power on, the operating system works, the applications are good, and then it's going to send you a report based upon this data. So it's going to even have custom scripts you can put in there. It has some already pre-built in to validate your applications are 100% recoverable. Now this is already there for VMware, but for Hyper-V, this is great news. Now, UAIR, I referenced that earlier. So that's where you can actually do that item level recovery. Once again, we are agentless for backup as well as restore capabilities. This is key. Now, the reason that we can do that is because of this virtual lab. So we're bringing these uh, VMs and these applications back into a more readable format so that it's very easy to translate that data back across into that original application. So you know agents to put out there. You don't have to buy anything additional. Once again, no a la carte routine. We're giving you what you need. You also don't have to do additional backups. So there's not going to be a backup needed for VM recovery and then one needed for file level, one needed for application. One backup accomplishes all of that. So it gives them much more ease of use and it helps save space as well. So it works with SQL, it works with Active Directory, and then the older versions of Exchange, so 2003, 2007, or really any other virtualized application that you have out there, because you can use the other tool, and we can use the native management tools of that particular application to do that recovery for you. So let's take a look at how that works. So we've already talked about how we create that virtual lab. So you're going to have your two networks, your production and your isolated. Now, that virtual proxy appliance that I was talking about earlier with the masqueraded IP, it's got one foot in production and one foot in that isolated network. And that's what's going to translate the data for me when I ask it to through the UAIR wizard. 
So what will happen is when we get that information, whether it's a table, schema, query result from SQL, a user, an attribute group policy, or that printer somebody loves to mess up, we can recover just those items back into your original production network. And because those applications are in that native format, it's very easy for production to inject that changes in, and all identifiers will be identical because it's restored right from your own backups. That on-demand sandbox, a couple great uses for this. So this allows you to start VMs up inside of that virtual lab. So we've been talking about the virtual lab for a little bit here. Basically, this gives us the ability to start from any restore point, so whether it's a full or an incremental. This allows us to put backups to work for you, so it's not just sitting there taking up space. Yes, it can do the, the verification, but what it also allows you to do is training. So now if I get a new admin in, I can stand up an environment for them to work in and play around in, and they can't blow up my production while they're learning. This gives me a way to test patches or updates, upgrades, and before deploying it, giving me the warm and fuzzies. If it blows up the lab, no worries, just turn it off. That proxy appliance, it's going to stop anything from coming through back into production, so it stops any bleed through for you. Archival to tape. Probably the most requested feature I've heard. People want to be able to do off-site backups. They want to be able to archive data to tape. They want the benefit of being able to put everything on disk so they get the really quick recovery options like the instant VM recovery that we talked about or Explore for Exchange, SharePoint. This is available for both VMware and Hyper-V. Basically, if it can be seen by Windows, we can send the backups there. So it'll take a copy and send it off to your tape library of choice. We even work with VTL here. Self-service recovery of VMs. This is really neat. So we've already had where you can do the individual guest files, but now you can also do the VMs. Now, business owners don't necessarily understand the workings of the virtual environment that really hosts their application. Honestly, they don't need to. All they need to know when their data gets lost or corrupted or when their applications go down, that they can recover it. And that's key here. So self-service recovery. This allows us to empower the business owners to recover what they need to recover quickly and easily with Backup Enterprise Manager. So you get your one-click restore. Been there for files, and now it's coming for the actual VMs themselves. So once again, there you don't have to have a direct network connection, same as with file level recovery. User permissions on that host or VM, and no agents once again. So you're going to find the no agent thing as a, as a theme through VM. So it's really easy to get in and search and browse. You don't have to know where everything is. You have your search options, and you can recover individual VMs, but one of the things in version 7 that's also coming out is being able to delegate who can do what. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. So it's a very easy to use interface. Just like everything that we do with Theme, we try to make things user friendly. Because when a disaster happens, that's bad enough. It shouldn't be a nightmare trying to do a recovery as well. So this is where you can get in here to your web browser. You can get in, search, right click on your file or your VM and restore what you need to. Now I talked about self-service recovery options. So what if you want just one person to be able to do documents, and they can recover VM1, but nothing else? OK, so we can assign that to them. Well, now we've got a user group one. So now what they're able to do is documents, spreadsheets, and VM3, but nothing else. And then you get user 2 that can only do spreadsheets, but VM 4 and 5, they can recover whenever they need to. Now I can tell who is able to recover what, not just at the file, but at the VM level. So I can specify this. Now I can have different administrative assistants or heads of different departments able to do and recover what they need to for their department without having to put additional taxation on the IT department to recover what they need to. And it also prevents other users from seeing the content of the recovered files. They can't even see what else is out there, just what they're able to restore. Virtual lab for replicas. So this is coming for VMware only at this point. But 
this is really neat. So we've been talking about virtual labs. We're talking about sure backup. We're bringing the same kind of technology to your replicas. So it's going to verify every restore point in that replica is good to go. So if you needed to fail over at a moment's notice and hit that failover button, any of those restore points, you can now have full confidence that they will be able to be online. But since it's a virtual lab, now we can also do UAIR and on-demand sandbox. So we're bringing that same technology into your replication job. Some of the things I like about it. It reduces the risk. So currently, if you're wanting to even test it, your replicas are recoverable, you actually have to power them on. You can undo it and discard changes, things of that nature, but there is an inherent risk. Usually it's done after hours, and the whole team is there to do it. So now we're going to help you reduce your cost of actually testing your replicas because you can turn them on in this isolated environment. It can be done during normal business hours just like Sure Backup can. And it's also going to turn your replicas into very powerful resources because now I can put them to work. That's not just resources that I've paid for. They're sitting over there, the hosts, all the RAM, the CPU, and not doing anything unless I need it to. Now I can actually leverage all resources in my VI that I've paid for. Once again, no agents, nothing additional to buy, comes with the product. So let's talk about how it works, because this is where it gets pretty neat. So it's going to be the same theory that we talked about before. So we've got our production side. It's going to do the normal verification that you're used to. But what it's also going to do is test those replicas that are over at that DR side. It's going to use the same, let me go back to that real quick, it's going to use the same kind of architecture we talked about before with the isolated environment, with the Linux appliance proxy, masqueraded IPs, same theory is now being taken there. You'll get an email once the share replica is complete, just like you do with share backup. But we also have UAIR for it. So now we can actually have the granular recovery. So if I'm not wanting to recover from my backups, maybe my replica was done more recent than my backup and I want to do an item level recovery, I could very easily do that from there, even using it as an on-demand sandbox, because it's the same theory. So you're going to have a proxy on either end that actually reads that data to transmit it through. So you're going to have your network VM proxy, just like you have a proxy on either side. Masquerade IPs in there, so no bleed through is going to happen unless we want it to. So now I can take that item and bring it back over to my production side. The on-demand sandbox, this allows us to now put these replicas to work like I was talking about. So now I can actually use them as my training ground. So I don't have to use production anymore. This is fantastic. So now I can do my testing over there. I can do my troubleshooting over there. I can update my applications before I put it into production. I can train my new admins. I now have an untapped resource that I can now utilize. Veeam is modern data protection. We're built for virtualization. This is what we do. This is all we do, and that's why we do it as well as we do. We work with both VMware and Hyper-V. Even if you have a dual hypervisor environment, you're going to get this single pane glass approach to both sides of your DR coin. Now, a couple things that weren't talked about in the slides that I want to make sure we cover. Backup copy. Fantastic. And the reason that I say that is because now you can do your off-site backups much easier and much faster and give yourself a grandfather father son situation say you don't want to do full replication you just want copies of your backups over at your other location create a backup copy job and you can even pick the VMs inside of there and we'll extract the data from our backups and just send those backed up VMs up to your other side now we also have where we can do backups from storage snapshots so this is going to allow you, if you're using um, HP left hand, 3PAR, or VSA for your primary production storage, you can now utilize those storage snapshots to take your backups. So there's no more hitting your hypervisor I.O. stack. There's no more hitting the network. You don't have to do any of that anymore. So it makes it much easier and less intensive on your environment to be able to do your backups from these storage snapshots. 
one of the things I also hadn't talked about is task automation. So currently, you're able to do PowerShell, but we're also going to be integrating RESTful APIs. Probably the coolest feature, WAN acceleration. So being able to do your off-site backups up to 50 times faster, even if you have a small pipe. You're going to put a Veeam WAN accelerator on either side. We're going to break up our own backup file and send it in special chunks across to that other one and then rebuild it on that side. So this gets your data off-site very quickly and doesn't flood your pipe. So it's going to give minimal impact but maximum utilization of your current resources. Now that's all that I have at the moment. So what I'd like to do is actually turn it back over to Michael and George. Thank you, Heather. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to George. Give me one second. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so I want to introduce myself. My name is George Mazitris. I'm the Senior Solutions Architect or Data Center at Converse Technology Group. Um, I asked Mike to uh, just do a small presentation of the uh, pre-sales uh, role here at, at Converse Technology Group, basically what we do as far as next steps for you guys if uh, if this product, like, like this being product interest you or any other products that, that Mike uh, uh, spoke about as far as our partners. Um, so uh, next steps, basically. Um, so what do we do? I mean, obviously, you engage uh, Converse Technology Group. We're going to come in. We're going to talk to you about uh, the Veeam product, if that's what you're interested in, right? Um, we're going to come. Up, we're going to speak to you about your detailed backup obje objectives, um, some of your RTR, PO objectives, and your disaster recovery. Um, we, you know, when it comes to backing up virtual environments, our first go-to is Veeam, obviously. The product is is, uh, is great at what it does. It, this is this is what it was built for, and this is what we we try to push for our customers when it comes to backing up these virtual environments. So uh, when we sit down with you for the first time, obviously we're gonna we're gonna speak to you about what are you looking to back up? Um, your percentage of, of the data center that's virtualized today, right? Um, what kind of offsite backup requirements do you have? What kind of retention requirements, right? and your disaster recovery requirements. So we want to know all these things. These are the, pretty much the, the key questions that we're going to ask because we have to craft up a solution that's going to work for you. Right? Um, then what we do is we take it to, to another level. Right? So we usually, uh, when we're sitting down with a customer, we want to talk about a reference architecture with the customer. Right? Um, and that reference architecture is basically what you have today and what it's going to look like tomorrow. Right? So. I tried to come up with a you know a reference architecture, and this is this is just a general reference architecture that we we built over in the past for uh, one of our clients. Um, I didn't remove the names because we try to keep that uh, personal, but uh, basically uh, we had a client that that we went into, and they they're running a data center, and it's it's it was very basic, but they wanted to engage with CTG because they wanted to expand on their their data center, their infrastructure, uh, their virtual desktop. Um, their uh, storage requirements, their backup requirements. So they engage with with commercial balance groups. So what we do is we we meet with the customer, we go over all of their requirements, and we build out what we call our reference architecture. And inside that reference architecture, we come up with an end state. And then what we do is we back out that end state, so we break it up in phases. So for example, um, in in this phase could be the infrastructure phase. So this would be to uh, to build out the infrastructure, right? And then we, we overlay it with um, our security, right? So now this is the security part of the, of the, uh, the high-level um, uh, project, right? And then we'll break it out. Maybe there's a wireless initiative. So we'll overlay that. And you'll see that these just keep overlaying and overlaying with different key component, components that they want to do, right? So there's a video initiative, right? And all this stuff can be broken out into phases. And then we have... Uh, an off-site, this, this customer has some group homes, they want to bring some off-site into this, so we added that in as well. Um, and then you have your data center, so we, they want to do uh, a virtual uh, desktop uh, solution, so um, we crafted a solution using uh, Cisco UCSB and, and EMC storage and uh, Cisco Zen desktop uh, for their um, uh, for the virtual desktop needs, right? So. Um, I also wanted to bring in another diagram that I did 
uh, most recently uh, for a customer. We just finished doing a Veeam implementation, right? So um, basically, this customer uh, wanted to do replication of their virtual environment. They were 100% virtual in all their locations, okay? Each of their locations had uh, some type of uh, VMware, uh, and they were running servers in each, each of the remote locations as well. Um, but the customer said, you know, I got to worry about my remote sites. I have to worry about my main site. I want to replicate amongst these sites, right? Which was great because with Veeam we can do that. So um, what we did is we set up a solution to them where their main data center is going to replicate all sites to their two remote data centers, as well as their two remote data centers going to replicate back to their main data center. So you see that there's all of this replication going on. Now, um, when we talk about the Veeam product, we, we need to be able to store that data somewhere, right? So in this picture, it's really generic as part of the repository where we're going to store that data. Where is that data? Uh, what, what kind of storage are we going to use? So what we did is uh, with this customer, they wanted to save on, on, uh, on their budget. They didn't want to go over the budget. So instead of putting a stand or, or something like that in each location to store this data, we sat there and we put in some Cisco UCS uh, C240 servers. These servers were robust enough that we can put in a lot of disk, up to 15, and we can load these things up uh, with storage for their repository. Uh, so when this data is being replicated, depending on the amount of time or, or how long you want to keep these backups, we're able to load up these servers. In addition to that, we're, we're able to take these uh, UCS servers and, and use them for other things. So for example, um, each one of these servers backs up those remote locations locally, right? So we're able to install the management tools on here and, and Veeam on this and, and back up Veeam locally to these uh, repository servers, uh, as well as uh, use them as repositories for the uh, replication track or the replication uh, data. Um, and that's great, basically what I want to show. I want to show some high level of, of how we uh, how we uh, do things here at CTG and, and when you engage us and the, and the uh, type of solutions that we're going to put together for you. Um, so, Heather, I want to pass it back to you for some QA. So, if you want to take the ball, um, it's all you. And we can open up. Thanks, George. Yeah, we did actually have two questions. Um, I didn't see them as I was going through. They're about tape. Um, the first one is he wanted somebody wanted to know if version 7 is going to be compatible with the HP MSL 3G series and the StoreWorks 9000 virtual library. As far as I know, both of those are going to be compatible because they can be seen in Windows. Um, so that's the main requirement. And from what I know of those two, they can both be seen that way. Um, so everything that I, I know on that one is, is good to go. I got a second question here asking about how is that integration. Unfortunately, I would love to be able to, to actually demonstrate that for you, but I don't actually have that beta where I can show how the integration works. But it's going to be just like you would create a typical backup job. So you go through, you choose the VMs, you choose the backups that you're wanting to send, basically. Once you choose those backups that you want to send to tape, you can set in your retention policies, so how long you're actually wanting to keep that data. It is going to have um, full backup tracking, so it's going to be able to tell you what's on the different tape drives, so you're going to be able to know where everything is. So when you have to pull data back from tape, you're going to easily know what's going on in there. I hope that answered everybody's questions. So if there's any other questions, go ahead and type them either in the chat box or in the question box, and I'll make sure that we get everything answered here as quickly as possible for you. All right, just got another question about database maintenance. Now, I'm assuming that you're, you're still talking about the tape integration. So at that point, like I said, we are going to do full backup tracking. Veeam does come with a SQL Express backend, so that's kind of how we keep track of everything. You can tie it to an existing instance of SQL if you needed to as well. Got another question here about tape. Does Veeam inherently do its own tape backups, or do I need to buy tape backup software? Great question. So Veeam's going to be able to take care of that for you. It is going to have to land on disk first, and then you run your tape job to actually send it off to the device that's your tape library. And now, what's nice with that is you're not going to need to learn anything. As long as it's presented to Windows and Windows can see it, then we can easily push that data across and then also do 
all that tracking and, and maintenance of the databases and keeping track of everything. All right, looks like nothing else at this time. We're going to give a little bit of time because I know sometimes it takes a little bit to actually get your question typed and put in there. Oh, looks like we did get another one. All right, is it wise to separate SQL from Veeam system or run it on the same? You can actually run it either way. Um, so it, you can tie it to what you already have out there, an existing instance of SQL or you can run with the SQL Express. SQL Express, I generally recommend no more than 1,000 VMs in the environment beyond SQL Express. It, I think, I'm hoping that answers your question. If not, go ahead and type in a, a response for me. Oh, so you get another response, which is safer? Uh, to run it as separate or part of it? Honestly, it's about, to save either way. Um, the reason that I say that is because Veeam inherently backs itself up with its configuration files and everything like that. Now if you did separate it out, um, then it would be very easy to go ahead and take a snapshot of that with VMware and, and back that up as well. So you definitely have that, that option there. So either one's going to be just as safe if you're wondering and worried about your database for Veeam that is. Looks like I'm getting another question about backup scheduling. It's still coming in, so let's give that one a second here, everybody. So basically, the question is backup scheduling. So with version 6.5, the person was having a little difficulty basically doing like a grandfather, father, son situation. And that's where backup copy job is really going to come into play without having to set up multiple backup jobs for that same VM. So what you'll do is you'll create your backup job, and then you'll use backup copy to keep a copy weekly and to keep your monthlies. And that gives you that GFS, that grandfather, father, son moment. And you can do the same thing with tape if you needed to. Got a question here about the release date of V7. I would love to give everybody the, the big GA announcement here. Unfortunately, the only thing I know um, and what they've told me, which is more than they've generally given out, is that it's going to be released this quarter. Now, we are currently in beta testing, so it is right around the corner. Got another question asking if you can set up backup jobs for folders on each VM, or can they only do the backup, set, the backup sets per VM? Really good question on here. So with Veeam, we do image-based backups. So that single backup grabs everything, virtual hardware, operating system, application, and files. Now, you can isolate certain drives that you don't want to, to utilize, so you can do some exclusions and things of that nature. But as a general rule of thumb, it's an image-based backup. But like I said, after that first one, remember, it's just your incrementals until you get to another full. I hope that answers your question. I got a question about SAN integration in version 6 and 7. So when you're talking about the, the three storage devices that I talked about as primary production storage, left hand or what they're calling the store once now, the VSA and soon to be 3PAR, what I've seen on the integration is awesome. So currently in version 6.5, you can actually do recovery from your SAN snapshot. So you can do an instant VM, files, 
or exchange level recovery right from that snapshot, which is awesome because we're actually reading HP's SAN snapshot backups. So we're actually reading what they're doing and allowing you to restore it. In version 7, from what I've seen, it's even cooler. So you can not only do that, but then you can even do the backups from there. Everything that I've seen, all the tests, all the trials, everything has gone pretty smooth from what I've seen. So I think that answered your question. Got a question here about Veeam being able to back up machines that are not VMs. Unfortunately, we do backup virtual machines only. So it has to be on either VMware or Hyper-V platform in order for us to be able to back it up. So no physical at this point. Not saying it's not on the roadmap, but where on the roadmap, I don't know. All right, we're going to give just a couple more minutes here for questions. I'm definitely here to assist as you need, and you can always contact us here at Veeam at any time if you think of questions later or we didn't have time to get to them today. So you definitely have an entire staff of Veeam engineers ready, willing, and able to assist as you're going through the process or even just to ask a couple questions. All right, so I'm not seeing anything else coming through at this point. So from the Veeam end, my name once again is Heather Nostein. I'm a systems engineer here at Veeam. I want to thank everybody for your time, your attention, and your attendance here today as we talked about not only what Converge technology can do for you, but what version 7 has coming to assist you with your virtual environment. Michael, do you have any last thoughts you'd like to add here in here at the end? Sure. Thank you, Heather. We, uh, we greatly appreciate uh, your participation today, as well as uh, George Mazitris from Converge Technology Group. Uh, folks, I think you will also be receiving a survey um, <clears throat> that should be coming uh, through the email. We would appreciate if you fill those out. It certainly gives us a great insight as to uh, how we did today, but also for future events as well. So again, thank you on behalf of me and uh, Converge Technology Group for your uh, attendance at today's seminar, and we look forward to work with you in the future.